alcohol, cigarettes, chocolate, the infographic show, and taxidermy? People are addicted to all sorts of things, but some are pretty bizarre, bizarre enough to spawn a long-running TV series named My Strange Addiction. These are some of the weirdest things people have ever been addicted to. One of the strangest addictions is a surprisingly common one, pika. This is the bizarre compulsion to eat things that aren't food. Some people are fixated on a specific object, like the woman on My Strange Addiction who couldn't stop drinking warm paint. Others chew their hair relentlessly, but some just eat whatever they can get their hands on, which naturally can lead to some serious medical issues as the body wasn't meant to digest things like rocks, buttons, and screws. Some severe pika sufferers have needed surgery, with one patient's stomach containing a shocking 1,446 items. It's mostly commonly seen in pregnant women and people with other mental and developmental disorders. A related disorder is less harmful but no less strange. Have you ever picked up an ice cube from an empty cup of soda and sucked on it or chewed it? It's an odd feeling, and one that most people don't want to repeat too often, unless they have pagophagia. These people are obsessed with eating and chewing ice. While it isn't as dangerous as pika due to the ice just dissolving into water, it can be a sign of iron or zinc deficiency. While people can live with this condition without harming their digestive system, the same can't be said for their mouths. Chewing ice can result in broken or damaged teeth, and the hard and cold substance can cause gum injuries. But some addictions can be too much of a good thing. The famous addiction show profiled a 55-year-old man named Tom who had decided to get fit, really fit. He got into cycling and soon escalated his exercise routine to six hours on his bike a day. Getting healthy, right? Not so much. His doctor warned him that he was putting too much wear and tear on his body and could be putting himself at risk for a heart attack if he continued to overexert himself. What drives an older person to break down their body with extreme exercise? Maybe fear of mortality, in which case he could be bringing on what he fears most. It's not the only way exercise can backfire. One of the only celebrities to appear on My Strange Addiction, Lauren Powers, was a model and fitness guru who got into bodybuilding as she got older, even winning amateur bodybuilding competitions. But she took it way too far, working out up to 36 hours a week. To ensure her body could stand up to the pressure, she became addicted to supplements and injections of human growth hormone, the controversial drug that gets athletes kicked out of their sports. While she beat an earlier substance abuse addiction, the powerhouse motivational speaker seemed to have replaced one addiction with the other. And some health regimens can have even worse consequences. A woman named Kimberly was worried about her weight as a college student, so she turned to a shortcut, taking laxatives to help her food go through her body quicker. It took off the pounds, but kick-started a terrible addiction, to the point where she now takes hundreds of laxatives a day. It wrecked havoc on her body, causing ulcers and malnutrition due to the abuse on her digestive system. Laxative abuse is common among people with eating disorders, but few take it to this extreme without endangering their life. How far would you go to get that perfect look? When most people think about tanning, they think about relaxing at the beach, but that isn't really an option for many people, and that's where tanning booths come in. These artificial sun lamps can give you a bronze look you're searching for, but they also wreak havoc on the skin and can increase the risk of cancer. While few sessions before vacation won't cause any long-term damage, some people become addicted. Not only are they searching for the perfect shade, but the ultraviolet rays of a tanning booth can release endorphins, which make people feel good. The combo leads to some people paying a visit to the tanning booth far more often than is healthy. And that's not the only change people make to their bodies. Cosmetic surgery is becoming an increasingly common decision. Usually, people have surgery to fix a feature they never liked, like their nose, or to tighten up some areas that are sagging with age. But some people just can't get enough. Estimates are that up to 10% of the people who've had plastic surgery become addicted, and many take it too far, winding up with their face looking unnatural or suffering medical complications. Doctors are starting to recognize this as a disorder in its own right. Body Dysmorphic Disorder, where people become obsessed with their appearance and see exaggerated flaws. And some people go for more colorful changes. Kids often want to make their first body modifications pretty young. Sure, little girls getting their ears pierced is pretty common, but mom is likely to shut down a nose ring and tattoos are out of the question. Maybe mom was worried that once they'll get started, they'll never stop. Some people get a high of endorphins when they get a new tattoo or a piercing and keep coming back until they're more canvas than person. Some people have dozens of piercings or more all over their face, or even tattoos over their entire body. While not all of these people are addicts, doctors get worried when the desire for more and crazier modifications starts to change from artistic expression to self-mutilation. 
and some people's idea of what's good for them is just nuts. A person indulges in a nice, refreshing drink of… human blood? No, this isn't a fictional vampire, it's a woman named Julia Caples who wants to live the life of one. She claims to feel stronger and healthier after feeding off human plasma, but at least she's not sinking into people's homes in the dead of night. Caples, who is part of a community of fellow wannabe vampires, uses a ritual knife to take blood from consenting donors. She drinks up to half a gallon of blood a month, a little every day, and claims to have craved it since she was a little girl. But doctors warn that not only is there no nutrition in consuming human blood, it could expose Caples to any diseases that are in her donor's bloodstream. You probably know a few people with this next addiction, but did you know it actually has a name? Oniomania sounds like a serious medical condition, but it's actually just the clinical name for being a shopaholic. While it's easy to joke about that girl you know being one because she seems to have a new purse every month, actual shopaholics struggle to stay afloat. Many find themselves spending any money they have for that high they get from purchasing, landing themselves in serious debt, and hiding their addiction from their families and there are enough people fighting this battle that support groups are readily available for it. And some people are addicted to a very specific type of purchase. Literature fans are used to this. They have a house full of books, many of which they haven't even read, but they can't stop buying. They'll read this new book on vacation any day now. An addiction to buying books is so common that it even has its own name, bibliomania. And it's usually harmless, except for making it harder to navigate around the house. But in extreme cases, people fill their house with every book they find, often multiple copies of the same book. And when he ran out of money to fill his addiction, Iowa man Stephen Bloomberg stole a staggering 23,000 books, worth over $5 million. It's not the only hobby that can have serious consequences when it goes too far. Your mom probably thinks you're a video game addict, given all the time she had to call you downstairs for dinner. But this is becoming more common, especially with the increase in open-ended video games that never actually have a natural stopping point. When your dad was fighting the good fight against Bowser, the game eventually ended and the credits rolled, which was the perfect time to do his homework. Now video games encourage both ongoing play and ongoing spending in microtransactions. Video game addicts have spent thousands of dollars they don't have on in-game items, and that's far from the most extreme. Gamers playing marathons have refused to get up, eat, drink, or sleep, which has led to collapses, medical conditions, and even death. Sometimes addictions start the minute you're born. Amy and Becky, two identical twin sisters profiled on My Strange Addiction, were obsessed with looking and acting alike. They wore the same clothing, did the same activities, and even made sure they were always eating the same amount of food down to the ounce, so one of them would never go up a clothing size over the other. Sounds like a cute way for the girls to enjoy being twins, except that Amy and Becky were 44 years old at the time the show aired. They had spent so much time working to be identical well into adulthood that neither of them knew how to live without the other. Family can drive people to strange behaviors. My Strange Addiction profiled a woman named Casey who had recently lost her husband Sean. Sean had been cremated so Casey would take him home with her. But she had taken that a little too far. She wouldn't go anywhere without the urn, even taking it out shopping with her. When the family tried to stage an intervention, they discovered her shocking secret. She had begun eating his ashes as a way to be closer to him. While cremation ashes are sterile and not dangerous, it was clear that Casey's grief over the loss of her husband had developed into a bizarre addiction that was only escalating. She's not the only person that had unusual methods of dealing with death. Barbara, another woman profiled on the show, suffered severe tragic losses in her life that led her to become obsessed with death and what comes next, to the point where she spends most of her time in the cemetery. Rather than fearing death, she believes that she's counting down to being reunited with everyone she's lost and relates more to the dead than to the living. When she's not in the cemetery, she's obsessively planning all the details of her own funeral, including writing her own funeral in advance. While self-planned funerals are becoming more common, few people treat it like an event they're looking forward to. And one man took this fixation with death even further. In one town in Brazil, funerals have a constant presence. A man named Luis Scarisi attended the funeral of his father in 1983 and then never stopped. He's attended every funeral in his town for over three decades and says that the first thing he does every morning is to check the obituaries. He even calls the hospital to find out about recent deaths. Squarisi is known all around town by the funeral directors, and it's rare for any family members to object to his presence at the funerals, even if he's never met the deceased. An odd obsession, but one he seems likely to continue until he attends one final funeral as the guest of honor. The desire for companionship does odd things to people. 
Debbie is one of many cat lovers in the world, but she takes it a little further than some. She has 12 cats and began collecting them since her husband's death. She centers her life around them and is willing to do anything for them, including cause herself physical harm because Debbie is severely allergic to cats. She makes do with the allergy medication and suffers through her symptoms, despite the fact that her doctors have told her that her feline obsession is a danger to her overall health. Cats, sure, but rats? Teresa, another My Strange Addiction fan favorite, has a unique choice in pets, hairless rats, 52 of them. Her entire apartment is full of cages containing her not furry friends, and she had to quit her job to keep up with feeding the rats and cleaning the cages. This has even led to her becoming estranged from her daughter, who was disgusted by what her mother's home was becoming. Unlike many of the other people who use their addiction as a coping mechanism for being alone, Teresa does it to have a family, at least until her daughter reaches her breaking point. A common cause for addictions is the search for comfort, but that can go way too far. Another episode profiled Krista, a loving mother of 12, but her children were all stuffed teddy bears. It's common for a child to get attached to a stuffed animal, but pretty rare for that to continue into adulthood. And Krista's obsession had only deepened. She had given each of them their own names and personalities and spent much of the day taking care of them, including a nightly bedtime ritual. Despite this, she managed to get into a relationship with a non ursine man, but he was increasingly frustrated by the fact that she spent more time talking to the bears than to him. But if you ask Krista, she didn't have a problem. For some people, those childhood obsessions never go away. It's common for children to carry around comfort objects, and separating from them can be a hassle, as any parent who has tried to wash that favorite blanket has found out. While this usually fades away as kids get older, people who experience trauma can often develop a stronger fixation on an object that soothes them. Whatever caused her fixation, Tamara from My Strange Addiction was still carrying her childhood pillow, named Boo, around wherever she went as an adult. This included toting it along with her in her shopping cart in the grocery store. While less disruptive than some addictions, it was sure to cause some odd stares, to say nothing of the awkwardness if she had to go to a furniture store. But some obsessions with objects take a more bizarre turn. It's not rare for guys to get a little too obsessed with their car. Maybe they get paranoid about anyone eating or drinking in it, spending way too much time buffing it and even giving it a name. But that's nothing compared to Nathaniel, who not only named his car Chase, but seems to believe he's dating the automobile. He hasn't been in any other relationship due to his commitment to the car, and even takes the car out on dates as part of a romantic relationship. He should probably hope the local drive-in doesn't close or things could get awkward. Some addictions, though, can be more physically harmful. Keeping yourself groomed is important, but it's easy to let it go when you're too stressed or busy. Suddenly your fingernails are way too long and it's time for a clipping. But Jazz, one of the strangest cases profiled on the show, had been obsessively growing her fingernails out for 22 years without clipping them. One of her nails was two feet long, and her bizarre feature was making it hard to do basic tasks, like brushing her teeth or tying her shoes. Her addiction was hurting her quality of life, but she seems terrified of even considering using a nail clipper. Sometimes it takes serious physical consequences before people make a change. No one really likes the smell of gasoline, do they? It's certainly not pleasant when you fill up the gas tank. However, a woman named Teresa had been spending 30 years obsessively smelling gasoline. Not only does she sniff it whenever she gets the opportunity, but she has taken to carrying a water bottle filled with the thick liquid on her at all times, pulling it out for a sniff every 10 minutes and getting up in the middle of the night for a fix. This has had a terrible impact on her health, including memory issues and anemia, and her family contacted the show hoping to get her help before it was too late. Sometimes a seemingly harmless habit can take an extreme turn. Rock collecting is one of the safest hobbies around, although it can certainly kill a conversation once you pull out the collection for guests. But no activity is harmless when someone is obsessively addicted. As My Strange Addiction showed about a woman named Belinda, not only does she spend an excessive amount of time hunting for the perfect rock, but every time she was rock hunting she fell into a trance-like state. She would lose track of time, disappear for hours, and would even wander into dangerous areas to find a rock that spoke to her and even recommended habits can get out of control. Keeping the home clean isn't something most people look forward to, and they try to get it over with as quickly as possible. Centrell, though, finds that keeping her home clean consumes her life. She spends up to eight hours a day scrubbing and polishing the home. By the time it's clean to her satisfaction, she's usually exhausted and has no time for anything else in her life. Making it worse, she loses her temper anytime someone in the household leaves an area that isn't clean to her satisfaction. She is obviously addicted to cleaning, 
but compulsions to clean are also affiliated with obsessive-compulsive disorder, which can lead people to believe that their welfare depends on completing single repetitive tasks. Some addictions are just plain gross. It's not something anyone looks forward to after taking a shower, cleaning the drain of all that nasty hair that builds up. But in one of the most memorable episodes of My Strange Addiction, a man named Evan suffering from anxiety found that his gross ritual was the only thing that relieved his tension. Not only did he look forward to doing it every time he showered, but he started doing it in social situations. Whenever he was in a new person's home, he would sneak away to their bathroom and clean their shower drain for them. Certainly odd, but maybe it's a win-win for the homeowner. And sometimes common addictions get taken to that next level. Whether you're an early riser or a fat orange cat who hates Mondays, a lot of people can't get the morning started without a cup of coffee. Like all substances, the more people consume caffeine, the more it takes to have an effect. A Florida couple, Mike and Trina, found a shocking way around these diminishing returns. They started taking their coffee up the other end. They give each other coffee enemas, spend several hours a day absorbing coffee, and swear they'll never go back to drinking it. While Trina even claimed that this bizarre treatment helped her gastric issues, most people will probably stick to Duncan. One man may either be a highly unusual addict or a very good con artist. Roger Tulgren, like many other people, is a huge fan of heavy metal music. But the Swedish man took his obsession a little further than most, being obsessed with attending concerts to the exclusion of just about every other part of his life. He couldn't keep a job, so he took an unusual approach to make ends meet. Instead of seeking therapy for his heavy metal addiction, he applied to the Swedish government to classify it as a disability so he could get benefits. And they agreed. With a monthly check coming his way, Tolgren was now free to spend all the time he wanted at concerts. But it seemed the novelty might have worn off because by 2012, he was back at work part-time, probably better for his hearing. But what drives people to addictions that can kill them? While pika can have serious physical consequences, it usually doesn't rise to the level of hyalophagia, a disorder where people are specifically obsessed with eating glass. Given that tricking people into eating glass is a common murder method in prison dramas, it doesn't take much to see why this is a bad idea. One rogue shard can pierce someone's stomach. My Strange Addiction profiled a man named Josh who liked to bite into champagne glasses and light bulbs. And while he disregarded the risk to his life from this behavior, he also seemed to relish the attention it brought him as a daredevil performer. When people think comfort object, they usually don't think burns and electrocution. A woman named Lori had been sleeping with her blow dryer since she was 8 years old, which would be odd but safe except that she keeps it running during the night as she sleeps, enjoying the noise and the warmth coming from it. Naturally, this was one of the most dangerous addictions ever profiled by My Strange Addiction because at any time the dryer could severely burn her or start an electrical fire. But by the time the show aired, she had been doing it for so long that she refused to go even a night without it. And the years of conditioning might have made it extremely challenging to go to sleep without its presence. Two people developed an obsession that was both unsanitary and disturbing. It's always a sad sight to see while driving down the road. Some unfortunate animals who weren't quite fast enough while crossing. Most people keep on driving and maybe say a prayer, but one man took this compassion a little too far. In Season 3, My Strange Addiction followed a man who collected roadkill and gave them proper burials. But that was nothing compared to Diva, a young woman who was obsessed with taxidermy, that she spent much of her free time searching the roadways for dead animals. She would bring them home and stuff them, creating an elaborate collection of preserved animals, much to the worries of her friends and family who were worried that the constant contact with roadkill might expose her to deadly parasites. And then there's one man who took celebrity worship way too far. When people think of Justin Bieber fans, they usually think of teenage girls screaming at concerts. But one German songwriter might have been the biggest fan of all. Tobias Sheldon didn't just enjoy Bieber's music, he wanted to be the younger pop star and spent over $100,000 on plastic surgery to transform himself into a double of the Canadian singer. The results were… mixed as the fact that he appeared on both My Strange Addiction and the plastic surgery show Botched indicates. Sadly, Sheldon's Bieber obsession led him down a bad path that eventually led to his 2015 death. But one of the most common addictions may be one you have without even knowing it. How many hours have you spent aimlessly scrolling social media? You don't even enjoy it. All the news is so depressing. It's even gained a name, doom scrolling. Yet you and millions of others may actually be addicted to social media. The big sites like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram all encourage endless scrolling, and many people find it taking up an abnormal amount of their day. 
Like online gambling and video games, social media addiction is one of the newer types, and addiction specialists are scrambling to figure out the best ways to help people kick the habit. But My Strange Addiction has been off the air for more than half a decade, so no documentary crew is coming your way to follow you around as you yell at random Twitter accounts. Addicted to the infographic show? Feed that urge by watching What is Sex Addiction? Or check out Why Are You So Addicted to Your Smartphone for more on how these devices get in your head.